Letter press printing has three distinct types of work. These are first, composition, the preparation of the type or other matter to be printed for the presses. Second, press work, the actual printing of the composed matter on paper or some other substance. And third, bindery work, the folding or joining together of the printed sheets into various forms so that they may be sent to the public. In the composing room of a good-sized printing firm, the duties are divided among several employees, specializing in various phases of the work. The copy for jobs to be printed goes first to the markup man. The markup man must have a thorough knowledge of the art of printing. He decides what styles and sizes of type will produce an attractive result. He indicates the parts to be set by hand compositors and those to be set by machine operators. Although a great part of today's type is set mechanically, hand compositors are employed by all large commercial printing plants, newspapers, and publishing houses. Hand compositors usually set the large type, called display line, used in advertisements and other printed matter. Hand composition offers opportunities for artistic expression. Compositors who have the ability to create original ideas are highly paid craftsmen. The work requires manual dexterity, good eyesight, and thoroughness. Linotypes and other typesetting machines are used for the part of the copy called straight matter, consisting of many lines of the same length and size of type. The linotype operator manipulates a keyboard to assemble lines of characters which come in contact with molten type metal to produce lines or slugs of type. These slugs are molded in the length required by the job. They are the right height for the presses and the words are spaced correctly in the line. The linotype operators must work speedily and accurately and be efficient in spelling, punctuation, word division, and printer's arithmetic. Some printing firms have monotype machines, which consist of two separate units, the keyboard and the casting machine. When the monotype keyboard operator presses the keys, punches driven by compressed air perforate a paper ribbon at the top of the machine. When the operator finishes, the ribbon is removed and placed in the casting machine. The perforated paper controls the movements of the machine, causing it to produce individual type characters set in properly spaced lines. There are other kinds of typesetting machines, but the monotype and linotype are typical examples. When a page of type has been set either by a machine or by hand, it is placed in a small proof press and printed on a large piece of paper. This leaves wide margins around the type where the proofreader indicates mistakes to be corrected. It is the proofreader's responsibility to find all errors in spelling, punctuation, and typography. Large plants employ persons, usually women, who do nothing but proofread. But in some shops, this job may be done by the foreman or head operator. After mistakes have been corrected, all the type and engraved plates for a single page must be assembled. In large printing firms, this work is done by specialists called makeup men. In the lockup department, workers called stone men assemble many pages of type into single form but there are several different ways in which the matter to be printed is prepared for the presses. It all depends on the kind of press to be used. Platen presses are used on small jobs, such as letterheads or hand bills. Some of these presses are hand fed. On other small job presses, an ingenious device feeds the paper automatically. There are automatic cylinder presses for long runs of small work. In offset presses, the matter to be printed is first impressed from a zinc plate to a special rubber roller, 
then transferred to the paper. And for printing magazines, books, and newspapers, there are immense high-speed rotary presses which, printing both sides of the paper in one operation, turn out thousands of folded copies per hour. But no matter what kind of press is used, a pressman must be a skilled, conscientious worker. He is in charge of expensive machinery and materials, and the quality of the work produced depends on his ability. Before a job can be printed, the pressman must make ready, that is, compensate for inequalities of pressure of the paper against the plate. This is done by building up portions of the impression surface with thin pieces of paper cut to the proper shape so that the pressure is equalized. A pressman must know how to adjust his press to all kinds of paper and secure mechanical accuracy throughout. He must have an eye for intensity of color and see that the inking is uniform at all times. And pressmen should be able to supervise assistants. For in many plants, an experienced man may be responsible for the proper functioning of several presses operated by apprentices. The printing trades acquire most of their new workers through apprenticeship or training on the job. Some vocational schools offer training which can be taken during apprenticeship or previous to it. Vocational school training alone does not always produce skilled workers, but it does enable a person to decide whether he is truly interested and suitable for the work. And the course of training is arranged to give the student a good background in printing. Usually a student starts with hand composition, because all of the fundamental principles of printing are derived from it. Through a series of prepared lessons, these principles are thoroughly fixed in the student's mind. The lessons include instruction in spelling, word division, proofreading, punctuation, and printer's arithmetic. After completing the hand composition course, a student is eligible for work in the press room. Here, he begins his study on a small, hand-fed job press. After mastering it, he is advanced to the small automatic presses. But there is a great deal to be learned before a student can assume the responsibility of operating the large cylinder presses. Above all, he must thoroughly understand the mechanism. Thus, press work is particularly fitted for young men who like to work with machinery. Students studying to become linotype operators must have mechanical knowledge too, but here the emphasis is on speed and accuracy. Usually, anyone who has mastered the typewriter can learn to operate the linotype keyboard, but he must also learn composition. A student who successfully completes the course of study in some phase of printing at a vocational school is prepared to enter the printing industry on a basis leading to worthwhile remuneration. The chances of securing employment are normally good, for there are thousands of large printing establishments in the country and many small shops and newspapers. And work in the printing trade is not seasonal. It goes on the year round, regardless of sunshine or rain. Working conditions are generally satisfactory as to housing, hygiene, and hours. If you think you would be interested in printing as a vocation, investigate its possibilities and prepare yourself accordingly for the phase of the work for which you are best suited. The printing industry needs young men and women in its composing rooms where thoughts and ideas are fashioned into type. It needs mechanically minded young men in its press rooms to operate the intricate machinery. It is a growing industry, high on the list of those offering stability of wages and employment, a high proportion of salaried positions, and real opportunities for advancement. Perhaps you will find a place for your tastes and talents in printing, a vocation offering splendid possibilities for your life work.